Good morning, everyone. We're going to learn Tanya today. Today is the 26th day of the month of ER, June 3rd. We're going to start with Svir Asa on page 139. Last night we counted 41. Let's say it together. Hayoim, Echad, Ba'arboim, Yoim, Shehem, Hamisha, Shavuot, Meshicha, Yamim, La'aymer. Today is 41 days, which is five weeks and six days of the Aymer. Okay, today's lesson, the godly light, the energy, is more concealed in the lower worlds and more revealed in the higher worlds. What does that mean? We're on page 63 in the Chayeno. Charlie, with me? The difference between the higher and lower worlds is with regard to the flow of vitality. You feel more, we were giving the the uh, muscle of the body and the soul versus the world and God and godliness. So you certainly feel more alive in your heart and in your brain than you do in your toe. Right? There's more energy there. You feel your lungs, you feel your, you know, your heart, your blood pumping. If you're, if you're God forbid, if your heart is out of rhythm, you feel that too. If you please put your phone on mute. There's a little bit of feedback there. Thank you. Oh, if you stop, you stop, you tell, you know it. That's a reminder that the neshama is there as well. The difference between the higher and lower worlds is in regard to the flow of vitality, which the blessed Ein Saif, the eternal light, causes to flow and illumine in a manner of revelation out of concealment. The Alter Rebbe is going to conclude that this revelation which we have obviously more so in the higher worlds than in the lowest world here or in the lower worlds, is intended for the purpose of vitalizing the worlds and their inhabitants. For the vitality of all worlds and creatures derives from the revelation of godliness within them. Thus, the difference between the higher and lower worlds lies in the varying degrees of divine revelation within them. With regard to revelation out of concealment, the Alter Rebbe now states, parenthetically, that this manner of revelation is one of the reasons why the godly vitality found within the world is called light. Why is the, why is the godly energy called light? We'll soon see. Which is one of the reasons why this energy that we receive from Hashem is called light. Why is it called light? Why isn't it called Energy. Why isn't it called flow? We'll see in a moment. In Kabbalistic literature, the flow and vitality of, of godliness is termed light rather than shefa, which here they translate it as flux. I'll, we'll just say flow. As it is termed in... Can someone look up what flux translates as on Google? What is flux? Like I said, flow. I, I, I think that's more of a common word than flux. Anyway. You're in flux. As it is termed in Jewish speculative philosophy, Chakira, that's the way they call it in Chakira, they say flux. But light signifies revelation out of concealment. Previously, previously, the just a second, I'm sorry. Previously, the light has been concealed within the luminary, the source of the light, and subsequently it's drawn forth from its source and revealed as light. <laughs> Even if you have a bulb, the potential of the light is there, but it has to be contracted and concealed in a little wire in the in the glass around it. I have no idea how LED works, but let's just say with the with the bulb itself, you know, it's inside this thing. And then when you turn it on, light can shine forth, but in a limited manner. Thus, in the case of revelation of concealment, only a minute illumination of the source is drawn down into a revealed state. Not so with Shefa, where it is the actual flux and stream of the source that flows down and is revealed. It's like a, a, a river just constantly flows. Let's say a waterfall is just constantly going to be flowing, whereas light is first concealed and then revealed. What is the light doing? It's animating the world and the creatures within Obviously, it's it's much more Hashem's energy is much more than light. We're translating and we're giving it that title. 
but it's really the godly energy that gives us life and gives everything life from the single blade of grass. Doc, we like to talk about the little rock, the kernel of sand or whatever. Herein lies the difference between the higher and lower worlds. The higher worlds receive this light in a somewhat more revealed form than do the lower worlds. Meaning even in the higher worlds, this light and vitality is not openly revealed. It's just revealed a little bit more than it is here. Or maybe a lot more. All creatures, whether it's in the higher worlds or the lower worlds, each according to its capacity and nature. I think about the, you know, you 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 give a kid, um, you give a kid candy. It's a good example. You know, the older you get, the kid knows. Okay, I'm gonna hold it till after I eat or whatever. You give a little kid candy, he doesn't know how to handle it or anything. You know, if you have a, if you don't worry, they held it to the game. It was good. And adults also. Some people can handle certain things. You want to criticize somebody. Certain people can take criticism properly. Other people, it's too much. They can't bear it. Or whatever the case may be, whatever you're trying to give them, you're trying to teach someone Torah. If, if they're if they're Kaylee for it, or if they're on a certain level, you could teach them deep concepts of the Torah. You can go right into the Mepharshim. You can go into the Gemara. But other people, you have to teach them basic Aleph base. So if you're in the higher world, we're talking about the revelation of God in the higher worlds and the lower worlds each according to its ability to ab absorb and receive the light of Hashem. <speaking in Hebrew> which is the nature and form of the particular flow with which the blessed and safe imbues and illumines it. <speaking in Hebrew> the lower worlds, let's use our world as an example. And even the spiritual ones do not receive the divine life force in quite such a revealed form as it is received in the higher worlds. But only by means of many garments wherein the blessed in Saif, the light of Hashem, invests the vitality and light which he causes to flow and shine on them in order to animate them. So the divine life force is garbed in many garments so as not to be revealed because it will be too powerful. It has to be concealed. This concealment involves not only a multitude of garments, a quantitative manner of concealment, but a qualitative one as well. There's a vast difference between the insubstantial garments that conceal the vitality in the higher worlds and the much denser garments necessary to conceal the godly vitality to the degree the creation of the physical becomes possible. So just say it like this. Let, let's say we go outside in the winter time. Oh, maybe for high 40s, low 50s. You could wear a little light jacket. You can handle it. You go into the into the Arctic, if you go into Minnesota or in northern Canada or Alaska, or even if you're diving in freezing cold ice, you have to have those thick wetsuits that protect you. So the 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 uh, the more the Kaylee is able to withstand, the less contraction and the less concealment that's needed. So what's the takeaway for today as we continue to plow through chapter 51 in the Tanya? talking about the different levels and different revelations of godly light. But the takeaway for today is divine energy is called by the Kabbalists light. Because when you see a created being, you're seeing a revealed manifestation of God. So when you see another human being knowing that he has a soul, that's God at work. That's the light of Hashem. And in fact, we really want to break it down. Every single thing that we see in this world is also the light of Hashem, just on a different level of revelation. Um, that's it for today, folks. Um, not sure exactly about tomorrow's schedule. We'll have to wait and see. We'll be in Pittsburgh tomorrow morning. All right.